All right, what's up, everybody? So, uh, changing the cooler uh, return filter and the transmission, the CVT transmission. Uh, this is the old one. And you can see it's probably good to change it every once in a while. This is the new one. Um, I had to pull the housing off to get to it. Uh, not not too difficult. Just make sure you got the right tools to do it with. It's only 10 mil bolts, but I'm gonna go up under here and. See if I can get a look at it. So that's where the housing went. Let me turn the light on here. And you can see the old O-ring is still on. I gotta get that O-ring off of there. Because the new one comes with an O-ring. But you can see the position of the four 10 mil bolts that hold it in. Um, they're not too bad. That one's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, that one really is kind of a pain in the butt because you have to go up over top of everything to get to it so make sure you got like a quarter inch um, ratchet and a swivel uh, to get you in there they're not super tight um, I think they're only about like eight pounds foot pounds of torque so they're not real tight and hard to get off it's just tough to get to um, but you will have to take off the return line coming from the uh, cooler which is this line that comes in over top uh, off of that right there and there's also a bolt uh, up there it's another 10 mil uh, let's see if I can get a look at it you can see it right about the middle of the screen where that 10 mil bolt goes in uh, let's see if I can get up there right there that holds the bracket for that um, line metal part of the line to come off so if you take that bolt out, disconnect the line right there, and then take your four bolts out of here, you'll have to kind of pull down on it a little bit and uh, kind of work the uh, the line and bracket over the top here and pull it down. It'll come off, and then you should be able to pull the, bra the gasket out or the filter out, and then make sure you take the old gasket off, which I'm about to get that off, and then replace it with the new one. Which is right here comes with a gasket uh, if the gasket is not inserted like that just make sure that that end with the lip right there goes down into the gasket so it's gonna sit like that going into the transmission and that'll be your cooler return line filter uh, some of these C CVT transmissions don't have the same type of setup this one does this one runs to uh, a cooler in the radiator and that's why this line is coming back from the radiator comes down here and uh, goes back into the transmission from there um, some of them just have a, 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 a housing that has like air veins on the side of it for cooling uh, so it might look a little different but it's still the same concept same type of filter um, Let's see, this is the filter I got. Made in Taiwan, of course. Uh, um, I got it from Advanced Auto Parts. It's only a few dollars. Uh, but that's their part number for the transmission filter. Uh, cooler return filter. So we're also going to change. I'm also in the process of doing the strainer. There it is. I'm going to do the strainer in the transmission and change the pan gasket there. So I'm in the process of doing that right now. I just knock out this filter first and then move on to the other part of it. So yeah, I'm going to get that gasket off of there and I'm going to put the new one on and we'll take a look at it. Alright, so I got the old gasket off. Um, they're kind of tough to get off with your fingers so I got this little handy pair of uh, little hemostats here. And grab that lip. Yeah, somebody's hair. Nice. Uh, what happens if you live in a house with a bunch of females? Uh, you can grab the lip like that and pull it right off. And then make sure you lube up the o ring on the new one. And it's going to take a little work to get it pushed on there and back and forth, you know, wiggling it back and forth to get it to finally push all the way on there because the o-ring is tight so and it's on there 
So I'm gonna put the um, housing back on it, tighten the housing down, uh, put the return line back on it, and close that up, and then move on to the wrong one, that one, the transmission. <laughs> Maybe you're looking at the oil pan, so we're gonna move on to the transmission pan. All right, so I just dropped the pan. There's the pan. The gasket was kind of stuck on there, but I put my fingernail in it, and it popped right off. The whole thing popped off at once. Uh, those are the two magnets. They go right there and right there. Uh, I'm gonna clean that off, clean it out real good, make sure the edge is good. Uh, the good thing was the gasket came up all in one piece. I don't leave any residue on here, so. That should make it clean and then a little bit easier. Uh, just make sure you always clean it off real good. Um, if you have to use a scraper, I would use like a plastic scraper so that you don't score up the pan or bend or dent anything because if you do, the pan's never gonna seal right. Uh, so I will take a quick look under the car. And there's where the magic happens. So there's the strainer. I'm going to take that off. There's one, two, three, ten mil bolts. I'm going to take those off, pull it down, swap it out with a new strainer. Uh, everything else looks pretty good. Um, there wasn't a lot of shavings or metal on the magnets, so, uh, you know, that's a good thing. Uh, and I didn't see any of those little pieces of uh, metal, little thin look looking blades like uh, that come off of the. Um, off of the uh, push belt. If you find those in your pan, uh, you got problems. The, the push belt's falling apart. Uh, so you, you're gonna have to do some major work, but there's the valve body. So uh, that's another thing you can swap out your valve body. If your valve body goes bad, uh, there's a couple of bolts holding it in. You'll have to disconnect the computer uh, and drop the whole valve body down. But fortunately, I'm not having to do that right now, so uh, we're going to go ahead and drop the strainer, swap out the strainer, and uh, make sure the pan, the, or the, the engine, the bottom of the engine is nice and clean. Uh, put the new gasket on the pan and put it back on the car. And yeah, that'll be that. And hopefully, uh, everything will be good to go. Um, the cooler return filter, we changed that and put these four bolts, one, two, three, and then there's a fourth one around up top. It's kind of a pain in the ass to get to. Uh, and then put that bolt back in that's holding the bracket on and reattach the hose. Um, I suppose you could do it without detaching the hose maybe just take that bolt out, take these bolts out and try to work it up. But it's, for me, it was just easier to remove the whole housing and get it off the car uh, and then put it back on um, when I tighten these bolts up uh, do a cross pattern I mean it doesn't uh, as far as I could find there was no no guidance real guidance on how to put those bolts like how to tighten them uh, so I just went in a cross pattern you know one there 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 and then tighten them down again and a little bit more it only takes like I think like eight pounds of uh, eight foot pounds of torque which Ain't hardly nothing, but um, yeah, make sure you just cross them when you do the tightening because you don't want to go around it like that. You want to try to kind of pull the whole housing evenly to the engine block so that that gasket gets a good seat. But yeah, we're gonna change the strainer out, three 10 mil bolts, drop the old strainer, put the new one on, uh, new pan gasket, clean up the pan, and put this thing back together and then put $110 worth of damn CVT fluid in it and hope nothing leaks. <laughs> so one more thing real quick is the this is the strainer here. And it's got the three 10 mil bolts that go in it. It's kind of looking at it like that on the vehicle. Three bolts. That's the strainer. And it comes with a gasket. It's kind of a rubberized gasket. It's not like a paper gasket. So it might be a little easier to work with. And this is again car quest uh, that's their part number for it uh, but it all came as one unit pan gasket and strainer um, 
For a lot of these, you don't really need to know the exact model of your transmission as long as you know the year and model of your car. Uh, they can find you the right one. So, one more time. Might be a little easier to tell this way. I'm uh, looking towards the rear of the car. Rear of the car is back that way. Uh, those are your strainer bolts. Short, short, long. That's going to be your long boy. These two are the same. That's the long one. And you'll be able to tell when you get it off. I mean, that's that's immediately threaded. You can see the threading right through there. Same on this side. You can see the threading as soon as you push it up there. That one's just going to have a, a hole that it goes through in the valve body and then threads up higher on the top of the valve body. The upper valve body assembly is where it threads in. But yeah, short, short, long. Uh, so the new strainer's in. Um, there's the old strainer. Make sure you take the old uh, o-ring off if it happens to stick up in there. It probably won't, but make sure if it does you take it off because the new one comes with an o-ring. Just make sure you wipe a little bit of transmission fluid around the new ring before you put it up in there. And then push, push, and it'll fall right into, slide right into place. But yeah, that's the uh, that's what the old one looked like. And there's a new one ready to get dirtied up. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna clean the pan and place the gasket on and see if I can get this thing up in here with the gasket to stay on and cooperate with me. All right, <clears throat> pan's clean. Magnets are clean and reinstalled. I got little bumps right there to show you where they should go. Plugs in. I got the seal laying on there right now. Uh, hopefully it doesn't fight me when I go to put it up in there. Uh, I haven't put any RTV or anything on here to hold the gasket in place. I'm just going to try to get it in there just like that. Uh, get a couple of bolts in it real quick. And it should stay in place. Um, what you want to do though is make sure that when you put it on the transmission is uh, you push it up against the transmission and hold it tight against the transmission with one hand while you put the bolts in. Get as many bolts in as you can. Uh, I would recommend like getting those two and those two in. Um, and tighten them, hand tighten them all the way down until it holds the pan against the engine. Then go ahead and put the rest of them in. Uh, as far as torque, it's like eight pounds, I think. Um, they weren't real tough to get off, so there wasn't a lot of torque putting them on. Uh, but get them in and then you can just go around in a circle. There's no specific pattern back and forth or anything like that according to the manual. Um, you can just go all the way around tightening them. And then we'll put the fluid in it and hopefully that there's no leaks. All right, everything's done. Pan's back on. Everything's tightened down. Uh, ended up taking almost seven quarts to fill it back up because it drained out of the cooler and I also have a aftermarket cooler on there as well so that took a little bit more fluid but it's all back on uh, drove it around a little bit didn't see any leaks uh, everything seemed to look pretty good felt good shifted good uh, that's basically it Oh, this thing's low. Um, pan. No leaks detected. Put it on a piece of cardboard. You know, just to see if anything leaked. But so far, everything looks good. Uh, haven't had any leaks. Um, there's the housing for the... Uh, cooler return line everything looks good there no leaks um, went around uh, twice I make it three times I went around three times tightening those bolts but just went all the way around in a circle came back went around again and then check them just to be sure that they were all nice and tight but about nine pounds of a uh, Put pounds of torque on them. Uh, plug back in. Everything's good. That's that's pretty much it. Uh, I also replaced a hub seal 
on the driver's side there on that axle. Um, pretty easy to do. Just recommend when you do it, get a um, a uh, kit to the puts to put in the seals. Um, one that it was about thirty dollars, I think, but uh, just that way you can hammer the seal in and set it um, instead of using a piece of wood or something like that. But uh, got it in, no leaks. Uh, the seal's nice and tight, and everything else looks good. That pretty much does it. Thanks for watching. So I mentioned that I replaced the um, hub seal. This was the old hub seal. Uh, I'm sorry, axle seal. Um, requires removing the uh, axle from the car, uh, which is really the biggest part of the job. You got to pull the hub, pull the axle out, and then that'll be sitting in the hole in the housing where your differential and um, uh, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, to get the seal out, uh, I took a just a regular screwdriver and put it under behind the seal, like this, and uh, kind of just slid it under there a little bit till I hit metal, and then backed off just a hair. That way I don't scratch it on the way out, and then just pry it up, and the whole thing just popped right out. So, that's the front side of it. That's the back side, transmission side. Uh, this is the axle and wheel side. So <clears throat> what I did is I got that, the bearing and race seal driver. Uh, this thing was like 30 bucks at Advance or O'Reilly. I don't remember where I got it anyway. Um, it comes with all these different ones that you can use. So what I did is it, it ended up being this uh, second one right here is the right size. Um, and it, it tells you on the directions, but this side is for races. When you're driving in a race, this side is for when you're driving in a bearing. And all you have to do is you take the bolt off of there, stick it on the end, tighten it down, and then take this and set it. And it's kind of hard to see. You'll set it inside of the rubber gasket. And that little piece of rubber sticking up right there, you'll set it inside of there. And then uh, you'll have the driver's side sticking out right here, and then you just tap on it with a hammer. To try to get it to go in as straight as possible. Um, and just tap, 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 tap. Don't try to drive it home with one shot because uh, you could damage the the uh, seal. So you just want to lightly tap it until it drives in. It'll seat all the way down in there. You'll feel it when it hits the, uh, when, it, when it's as deep as it's supposed to go, you'll feel it. Um, then what you'll do is kind of run your finger around the edge of the transmission housing and you shouldn't feel any of the rubber sticking up or sticking out past it. It should all be down inside of there. And then that's it for basically for uh, replacing a uh, axle seal. Uh, I only did the driver's side, didn't do the passenger side, just did the driver's side. Uh, what the issue was, um, was where the axle went in. If you grab a hold of the axle, there was a lot of play up and down uh, in the axle. It wasn't leaking, but there was just a lot of play up and down. Forward and back, it's normal, but up and down. You don't want to have a lot of play up and down when you, when you grab a hold of your axle, push up and down on it. You don't want play in it. Uh, so I replaced the seal, and now when I grab a hold of the axle and push up and down, and it moves very little bit. You want it to move a little, but not you know a major movement. So I'm thinking that you know this seal kind of got wore out. The bottom of it got a little bit wore out, most likely, uh, because as you can see, the car is lowered, so the angle of the axle is you know way up like this and it puts a lot of stress on the uh, top side of the seal um, so i just went ahead and replaced it but that's basically it so do yourself a favor and get one of these kits that thing fits down in there real nice and neat plugs or uh pound your seal in uh, some people use a piece of wood or something but that's a very small lip to get that piece of wood on to drive that thing in and you risk messing it up so just do yourself a favor and get one of these. Uh, I think it's like so. It's like thirty bucks, and then you know, hell, once you're done, if you don't ever think you're going to use it again, take it back, get your money back. You know, tell them it didn't work, whatever. But uh, yeah, that's it for the actual seal.